Welcome back to a new video about DGT amplifiers. This is our example number eight. In this example, we will look at a two-stage amplifier that produces much more gain than just a single stage amplifier. We will use the BGT and we have two BGTs in cascade here in a common emitter amplifier configuration. And they are AC coupled. Of course, we will work out shortly everything in the calculation step by step and also verify these in our SPICE simulations. So let's look at our example. We have this circuit given. It has now a two-stage configuration. We can look at it like this. This is the first stage. You see the configuration we have discussed also in the other videos, like the one the single stage common emitter amplifier. The other one is the second stage, which is shown here, and that's AC coupled via the capacitor C2. That's the uh, stage two. We also have our source, which is now modeled as a Teflon equivalent circuit, which is then the RS out the output resistance, which is the source. And the load is just a simple resistor here, RL, which is the load. And the values of the resistors and the, and the other uh, values of the betas for the transistor, etc., are all shown here. And we have only one DC source, which is the VCC, which is 24 volts. Now what we want is the calculation of the voltage gain, which is from VO or VI. So VI is here and VO is all the way here. AC coupled the collector of the, uh, the transistor Q2. So let's see how we can work it out. Of course, in the solutions, we start with the DC analysis. And from there, we get the parameters that will be used in the AC analysis. So the first circuit for the DC analysis is the DC circuit of this first stage. That means the capacitors are all open. That means we consider this an open, that is open, that is open, CE1, CE2, and C3 also. That means the stage one and stage two are decoupled. We also lose the load and also the source is decoupled. So we can consider this stage one and stage two as independent. That's also what's shown here. So this is stage one and that's stage two. You see also the DC parameters for the currents here. Now we start with the first stage and then work out the next analysis for the second stage. So let's go with the first stage. That will be then determined by transforming this to the Teflon equivalent circuit. That was not done by the MOSFET circuits because the input impedance here was infinite. In this case it is not, so we need to use it. I already designated the node A here, we will use later. And we see again the base current, the collector current and emitter current, also the base emitter voltage and the collector emitter voltage in the DC configuration. This here is a Tefanen 1, which is the Tefanen resistance for the stage 1 and the Tefanen voltage for the stage 1. So we need to first calculate that. Now for the Tefanen equivalent circuit, at node A we have then the Tefanen resistance, which is just the R1 and R2 in parallel. And we know the values here, R1 and R2, so we can calculate that. That will give us exactly 18 kilo ohms. The Tefanen voltage is also determined in this format. So you can look at the base voltage here and you divide actually use the voltage divider rule. In this case, so you say R2 over R1 plus R2 times the VCC. We also know the VCC also the resistors. So we can just substitute this and you get 2.4 volts. Okay, that's now the analysis for the Tefanen equivalent circuit at node A. Now we need to use this circuit to calculate the required DC parameters. Now we apply now here the Kirchhoff's voltage law at the input loop. We see the Tefanen voltage is equal to the Tefanen resistor times the IB1 and it plus this BVE1 times the voltage across the RE1. But the current through RE1 is the emitter current and that is actually given by this expression when you consider the linear region cooperation. So beta1 time plus 1 times the base current. And when you now substitute this in this formula, you get now an equation which has only IB1 as an unknown. So we can now write it down in this format so you can collect the IB1 terms together and then express now the IB1, the base current for the first stage as shown here. And this is now what we will use and also calculate the IB1. So we will use this. We know the Tefanen voltage and also the other values. And we can now substitute this in here and you get 7.76 three microamps. Now the collector and the emitter current are now calculated pretty easily because the collector current is just the beta times the base current. That's just 200 times over you have calculated. You get now 1.553 milliamps. 
and the emitter current is already given here as the formula so we can just substitute again 200 plus one so 201 times the base current and you will get 1.560 milliamps in order to check that this is indeed working in the linear region we need to also check the vce that's also what we need to do so we will apply here in the output the kirchhoff's voltage law we say the vcc is equal to the voltage across rc1 plus the voltage vce1 plus the voltage across the re1 and we use here for the rc1 and now for the re1 ohm's law and when you now express the vce1 in terms of the other parameters you get this one and you now substitute the current for the collector and the emitter and also the value for resistors and the vcc you will get the value of 10.02 volts or approximately 10 volts so this is definitely larger than the 0.2 volts which is the saturation uh, limit so we need to be above that value so this is definitely in the linear region so our assumption is correct so if we can move on and then do the exact same analysis now for stage two you see the r3 and r4 here now that everything has changed we just only take the stage two in a similar format you take you make the tefanon equivalent circuit so you now have the r tefanon 2 v tefanon 2 and also the other parameter specifically for the second stage we now have the node b here so we now do the tefanon equivalent circuit at node b in a similar format so we just calculate everything in the uh, model here and you get now nine kilo ohms and for the tefanon voltage you get in a similar format you get now here 2.4 again in this case so what we do next now we will now use again the Kirchhoff voltage law for the input load and then use this circuit to work out the base current so again same thing we have now the emitter current which will be then inserted in this formula and then you get this form where you have the coefficient for the IB2 and IB2 can now be expressed in this case and this is very similar to stage one Let's then continue using this formula substitute the values here we know where the tefanon voltage is and also the vbe and also the other parameters we just calculate the tefanon resistor here v the re2 is given as 500 ohms and also the beta 2 is in this case 100 so when you do that you get 28.57 micramps that is what you have for the base current for the second stage now in order to calculate now the collector current you use again use the beta times the base current that is the value for the collector current for the second stage which is 2.857 milliamps and similar for the emitter current you use this formula and you get now here 2.886 milliamps now again in order to check that this transistor is working in the linear region of operation we need to check the vce so we apply the kirchhoff's voltage law at the output loop we say vcc is equal to this voltage plus the voltage across the these two nodes collector and emitter and also voltage across the re2 in similar form we had done for stage one now expressing the vce2 we get this expression and when you now have the ic2 and the ie2 in here and also the resistor and the values for the rc2 and the re2 you get now 2.558 volts that's now for the second stage you can see that this is again much larger than the 0.2 volts which is our uh, boundary for the saturation region so this is again correct so we, our assumption is correct we can move on okay now let's now look at the ac analysis we collect now the important parameters which are the base currents for the first and the second stage here so we can use it later this is a small signal model and in order to understand this let's first look at our original circuit in the AC domain, we need to uh, disable the DC sources and also short the capacitors. So the shorting capacitor means the C1 is shorted, CE1 is shorted, CE2 is shorted, C2 is shorted, also the C3 is shorted, and we have also the DC voltage or VCC is also shorted. So this is considered as a ground in the AC domain. So let's now look at the B one c1 and e1 the first stage here this is now the model for the first stage you see the r pi one which is the dynamic resistor of the q1 and also its dependent current source let me start with the base one which is this node there you see the r2 going to ground directly so it's also shown here you also see the r1 going up but it also goes to ground because the vcc was grounded for the ac domain that's also shown here you also see that the C1 is shorted, so the RS is going directly to the VI source, which is shown here. So that is 
only for the part of the base uh, base node for the first transistor. We also have between the base and the emitter always this dynamic resistor, which is the RPi and specific enough for the one that is also shown here. Between the collector and the emitter, you have this dependent current source, which is the beta one times the IB one, which is the current flowing here. So that determines how much current is flowing here, which is the collector current in the AC domain. Now that's done. Now looking at the collector node here. Oh, by the way, for the emitter, I forgot that em emitter node is shorted actually directly to ground. You see that it is at this node. We actually have the resistor, but the capacitor will short it out. So you have only this to direct connection to ground. So that's easy. So for the C1, you see the RC1 again, that goes up, but again to the ground. So that's why we have it here. You also have this shorted. So again, connected to the collector of the Q1, but also you see the R4 is connected to the ground from that node. And from that node also R3 is connected to the ground because the VCC was ground. So you see now the three resistors now in parallel. In addition, you, were, you are now at B2, which is our base node of the Q2. That is between the base of and the emitter. We see the dynamic resistor again, the R pi 2, which is again connected like this. And since the emitter is again shorted here, because the capacitor CE2 is there, which will be also grounded here exactly, so we see now also the R pi 2 is in this format. And again, our dependent current source. And now the finally, which is the collector node, which is then connected to the, or there are uh, two resistors actually connected to it, which is RC2, and it goes to VCC, but that is ground. So we see also again, that goes to the ground. And the load, which is connected to the collector C2, but it also goes to ground here. So since the C3 is shorted and we have the physical ground already here. So we now have the complete circuit with the first stage model and the second stage and also the resistors connected in this configuration. So let's now first determine the required parameters in this uh, model because we don't know the RPi1 and RPi2 yet. So that formula is given by this. So the RPi in general is given by the thermal voltage divided by the base current at DC. And specifically for the first stage, we can write this one, this one. So you can get this value from what we have done in the DC analysis. So you get now 3,349 ohms for the R by one. And R by two in a similar format, you get this current for the base and you get now 910 ohms. So we have now all the values here we require for our analysis. The betas are also known. So let's move on. And first we collect the resistors here because the R1, R2 and the R by one are effectively parallel. So we can say these are parallel. I just give it a name, which is RA here. You can also call it RX or RP, it doesn't matter. So R does my name. And that is now calculated using the R1, R2, and also the RPi, just calculated. It will be then end up when you do the uh, calculation here for three resistors in parallel, 2824 ohms. You can also collect these resistors, which are now four, RC1, R3, R4, and RPi2. So, and I call this in this case RB. And RB is now the parallel combination of their resistors. You know that's eight kilo ohms for the RC1. 90 kilo ohms for the R3 and 10 kilo ohms for R4, which is shown here in 910 ohms, which is just calculated for the RPi2. Now, when you do the calculation here, you get 749 ohms. The final one is the output, these two, so RC2 and RL, that can be also taken parallel. I just got it now RX. So RC2 parallel with RL. So that will be then 7000 in parallel with 3000, which is actually shown here, the load and the 7000. You get 2100, so 2.1 kilo ohms. Okay, now we have done the necessary calculations here. So we can move on in the voltage gain. We know that it was given by V over VI. But we can now split the problem in several parts. Because going from the input all the way to the output is not easy. So it is kind of a several steps in between. So I divided now the problem in several steps. Let me first discuss the first part, which is the VI going to this node, which is actually a voltage division, this part. So I take the RA divided by the RS times RA, which is then actually VB1 over VI. The next one is the blue one, which goes actually from the node B1 to the collector. And then from the collector C2, or I mean C1, all the way to the C2. 
2, which is also the VO. So VO over the VC1. If you now look at this formula, you can divide out the VB once and also the VC once. You get exact same as the VO or VI as originally. But the calculation of these three parts is easier than the direct calculations. That's the reason for doing this. And now as said, this is the voltage division. So the red one, so VB1 over VI, which is just the RA over RS plus RI, RA. Now we have our first expression, so that can be substituted in here later. For this one, we need to set up the collector voltage at node C1. And that is then minus B tau 1 times the IB1 times the RB. Why minus? Because when you measure the node voltage here, it goes from this to ground. But the collector current here is circulating in the reverse direction. So that's the minus sign required. We also need the VB1, which is this voltage from this node to ground which is actually the voltage across R pi 1, which is I B 1 times R pi 1. Now, when you now take that together and then put them in the fraction form, you get now this, and you can now divide out the I B 1s, and you'll get now the minus beta 1 times the R B over R pi 1. This is now for the second part. In the similar form, we did now for the pink part, which is V over V C 1. V O is, again, this node voltage is this resistor, times the current through it, but that is the minus of the IC2, which is then minus the beta 2 times the IB2, so times the Rx. In a similar form for the, B, uh, the, the voltage at node B2 or node C1, which is this. In this case, the voltage here across this R pi 2 will be needed, so that's IB2 times R pi 2, and we now take them together again and take the fraction, you get this expression, and we now do the math by dividing out the IB1, IB2s, you get this expression. Now we have the necessary parameters, necessary parts for our complete expression of the voltage gain. Now taking them together, we have now this expression. You see two minus signs, so they will cancel each other out. You see now then the following simplified expression. This is just the attenuation, and these are the gain parts for two stages multiplied in cascade. So when you now use the values we have given here, in this case, we have now 2,824 for our RA, just calculated. And also the other parameters, we know also the RS is 600. So everything is now substituted, also the beta 1 and beta 2s, etc. Now you get now 8,513 as the gain. This is now what we have calculated, so it's quite large. Okay, let's now check this. Uh, first, we start with the DC analysis. First, with our stage 1 and stage 2. Stage 1 and stage 2, currents and also the voltage, Collector emitter voltage are shown here, and this is the DC analysis in the SPI simulations. You see the collector current and also the base current and also the emitter current here, and also the collector emitter voltage for the first stage. You see some differences because the parameters or the model of the uh, transistors is much complicated than the model I just used. So there are some differences. You see here the, the base current is almost 7.97 microamps, I have 7.76 microamps, so there are small differences, but this small difference will translate also into the small difference in the collector current, because this is 1.59, I have 1.55, and I we have here 1.6 milliamps approximately for the emitter current, here it is 1.56, so it is a small error, and also for the collector emitter voltage, we see here it is almost 5.65 volts, we have almost 10 volts, so there is 350 volts 350 millivolts i mean difference here not that much to be honest because when you do that in percentages it is not that much a big difference it also depends on how much error you have in your actual gain and how linear it is that is the really the final goal let's also look at the second stage because it's now here 29.1 microamps approximately we have 28.6 microamps approximately so also a small difference also in the collector current we see a small difference also in the emitter and also in the collector emitter voltage, we see a small difference. So we see in this case, we have also some difference there. So it is maybe not exactly, but it is very close in this format. So also use, considering that we have a very simple model for our transistor, this is good enough to continue. And also checking that also in the AC analysis, that's also important. So let's move on and then go to the transient analysis. We know a transient response. We know that our gain was 8,513. So let's see if this is indeed correct, because if we now look at the curves, the blue line is our input. It has a 10 micro 
uh, volts peak because the gain is huge so I cannot just put in one millivolt so then we'll get saturation so we uh, actually I actually did a very small current in it uh, voltage in it so now 10 micro volts with a 10 kilohertz frequency so the peak peak value in this case is 20 micro volts only and when you look at the pink value which is our output voltage you see it has a maximum and a minimum value and when you now look at the maximum and minimum difference it will be 100 76.14 millivolts now when you now do the calculation of the gain which is now the peak peak output voltage divided by the peak peak input voltage i just use this simple formula you get now this because the 20 microvolts will mean 0 0.020 millivolts so you can now just divide out the units also and if you do the calculations here you will get 8807 as the gain and we have calculated 8500 uh, 13 as the gain so how much error is that actually so you can calculate that for yourself it is not that much it is approximately three percent so it is not a big deal uh, so it is 3.5 maybe uh, in in that order so it's perfectly fine for these kind of circuits to have some error don't expect that you get a 0 0.01 percent accuracy if you have of course 10 percent or 20 percent error that might be the case that you need to adjust your uh, values or your design to get it more accurate. But this is nice and very really good result looking at the simulation also what we have calculated. So this is calculated, this is simulated. So the error is just less than 3.5% in this case. Right, this is our example about the two-stage amplifier using two BGTs in the cascade format using the common emitter configurations. We have calculated the values in the DC analysis and then move to the AC analysis and use our small signal model to calculate the required gain for this or the actual gain for this circuit. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. In order to grow our community and also this channel, please support us, like and share this video so that we can reach more people. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video.